Hello everyone, welcome to Dulo and Chill. Hello everyone and welcome to Dodo and Chill and today the subject of the day it's Freedom Fighters. When Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who chose to oppose his shield must yield. If he's led to a fight and a duel is due, then the red and the white and the blue will come through when Captain America throws his mighty shield. So yeah, I'm that old. So what's up, Bell Rider? And hello, El Gargo. As you guys can see, I'm alone today. Nobody joined in yet. But it is the 4th of July, and everybody, all my U.S. friends, welcome. And uh, happy 4th of July. And right now, I'm starting dueling a little something, and it's the Freedom Fighter. Uh, what is it? Yeah. The Fighting American. If you don't know, Jack Kirby and Joe Simon are the original creator of Captain America. And uh, in, what, 50-something, um, 54, they created something called the Fighting American, which was a reimagining, you could say, like a second, a new type of Captain America that was uh, redesigned and redone at Image Comics. I think it was Rob Liefeld with Awesome Comics back then. Yeah, and Jeff Loeb, and uh, what's his name? Hmm. Jeff Loeb and McGinnis, and McGinnis took over. And that was pretty sweet, Siri. <laughs> yeah, John, yeah, probably. <laughs> It's uh, the, the, yeah, my, my channel is not American enough for them, or maybe they're just busy celebrating with friends, doing fireworks, barbecues, and stuff like that. But I still decided to go through with the, the, the stream, and maybe they'll join in after. So I won't be doing Captain America, but I will be doing the Fighting American. I'm pretty sure some of you guys read those comics too as well. Go check your DM out, go girl. And creating the Fighting American was their way of fighting the fact that, you know, they got their rights stolen from them from Captain America. And Stan Lee was trying to claim that he created Captain America when they relaunched it at Marvel. Huh. 
I remember properly, was published at Crestwood Publication and then by Harvey Comics. Then there was a, a few series at Awesome Entertainment by Rob Liefeld. Sorry, I'm checking the info at the same time. But yeah, the original creators of uh, Captain America decided to, you know, create a new type of Captain America. And uh, I think it was a pretty cool concept. And I really enjoyed the idea that image was really supportive of uh, Jack Kirby. Let's do them holding the flag right here. With pride like it should fucking be. What's up, Pepe? Yo, what up? <laughs> how you doing? Yeah, same old, same old. How about you? Doing great. Happy 4th of July. Well, thank you. Same to you. Uh, yeah, happy birthday, America. <laughs> yeah where you know it's not it's not fashionable anymore to be proud of the flag you saw that little meme of uh the amazon guy oh yeah uh, whatever those i used to be like that when i was a juvenile upset because i was forced to do stuff in school <laughs> then, <laughs> eventually you grow, grow up and then you realize the stuff you can do, and then you look at other places and see what they can't do. Like, you see that video of that rapper in Cuba who was uh, protesting against communism and got raided by the police? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't see it. I'm not oh. surprised. Yeah. Or what else? Oh, uh, protesters get their mouths showed, sewed shut, too. Uh, you've seen people in uh, the UK and Netherlands? Getting beat up because they're protesting, just standing, just sitting there in a the park, getting beat up and clubbed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they're trying to pass here in Canada the hate speech crime on internet, so they can find you up to fifty thousand dollars, and the people that tell on you, they get twenty, they get twenty k. Is that different than the bigotry law that they passed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Wow. Wow. It's not passed yet, but they're pushing for it. It's like the Bill C-10 that I was talking about, where they're trying to police the internet. <laughs> uh, they're just going to turn on each other because you know how, uh, how pretty much anybody gets canceled for 10 years worth of shit. Yep. I mean, what was it? When they canceled Kevin Hart for from the Golden Globes for homophobic jokes? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, it's like there's almost no more comedy at all anymore. There's none. You have to watch old videos on YouTube or, you know, people filming people that are still doing comedy shows, but, you know, in private. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be underground, like in a basement, like a fight club scenery. Yeah. And right now, it's like the same thing was happening here, like uh, in July, uh, for, uh, July 1st. Here was Canada Day. And, you know, technically, it's be a shame of being Canada. Canada. We're like, wait, 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 what? Yeah. And, you know, that all, that, that that subject there where they're going like, oh, all those schools with all those. That, dude, we've known this for 30 years. You've never done nothing for about it. But now, because you it's coming to elections. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's like... Uh... That mayor uh, in Chicago, Lightfoot, mm -hmm. you know, there's people like, what are you going to do about the violence? That's all fake news. That's lies. It's coming from the local news, lady. <laughs> this, is not, this is not the national news. This is the local news. <laughs> no, I was kind of hoping that Scotsman would have, have time to come on. Because he did, he, he did some ink asses on the actual series of the Fighting American for uh, Image. No kidding. Mm -hmm. He was I... ink assistant for, um, oh, I, don't, I forgot his name, 
but the inker that was doing the the inking on Ed McGuinness. Okay. I always forget about uh, Scotsman's histories. He's just such a young looking guy. <laughs> Until he takes that baseball cap off. <laughs> oh, that's why he doesn't take the cap off. <laughs> Did you ever read The Fighting American? No. Unfortunately, I'm playing catch up. Yeah, it was them going going like doing a big fuck you when they were, you know, back then when Stanley was trying to claim that he created Captain America. Ah. And they went they created the Fighting American. And then, you know, later on when Image launch, uh, you know, we're doing good. And, well, Rob Liefeld brought it back with the, the support of Jack Kirby. <laughs> I'm looking at pictures of him. He he looks a lot like, his costume looks a lot like uh, Sam Wilson's Captain American costume. Mm, yep. Or I mean, remember, remember the shield that Archie Comics had later? The shield. Let me look that up. We're checking in the chat. We got this was both. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I try to sound sexy, it sounds more like I'm trying to be a rapist. I'm a rapist. So they changed her into a female. They didn't know. The shield? Yeah, there's a there's a girl shield now. At least she looks good. She's got some boobs, some waist. I mean, she doesn't look like a weird, uh, roided out beast. Is it is it like replacing, or it's a you know a female version of the character, but you still there? Probably a female version. Let me see. Shield Archie Comics Wikipedia. Yeah, it's a it's a different different person victoria adams okay it's like the miss shield <laughs> <laughs> but her costume i mean his costume is kind of cool from the beginning it's like a giant giant flag going down mm -hmm. It's like when when you look at all the designs of uh, the character, I like the version where <clears throat> he had the mask on, right? The 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 Fighting American, but he had this he had the hair out. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. It's not the most popular one, I think, that people know the most about. But yeah, to me, it's the I like that one. Yeah. I like the boots a lot better than Captain America's boots and gloves. I don't like that extra 70s weird... Uh, Pirate-y type of boots? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it kind of looks like something uh, something a, uh, a superhero in real life would wear. I wonder who has the rights right now. I think it's DC Comics from the Wikipedia. Want to double check? It says Archie the Comics, hmm. but then it says uh, DC Comics. Oh, Red Circle were again licensed by DC and rebooted. Okay, 
So it is DC. Doesn't DC own uh, Archie now or something? Do I, don't I don't know. I'm asking. That's not, okay. It's not a statement. It's a question. <laughs> you know, that would make sense because... Uh, uh, the big crossover. Yeah. Rivendale was on CW. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm asking. Let me check. Since I'm on the Wikipedia. Ship relaunch. Huh. Interesting. What? Um Marvel had the license to Archie Comics in 2017. Hmm. And now it's uh, DC or Warner Brothers. Uh, DC has a, a red circle from what it sounds like. Uh, the last thing I was reading. Wikipedia is really, really confusing. You know, back then when I was a kid, I used to think that uh, <clears throat> Simon Kirby was the same was one person. <laughs> yeah. It was more than one person. <laughs> like I, I literally thought that Jack Kirby's name was Simon Kirby. <laughs> Until you know later on. But, yeah. yeah, I used to think Todd McFarlane was the creator of Spider Man. So I'm with you there. And people used to think uh, Stanley created Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I used to think Stan Lee was the founder of Marvel Comics. <laughs> Well, you know what Stanley did bring to Captain America, though? What? He is the one that brought the, the throwing shield thing. Oh, cool. The type of novel novelization that he did. Oh, give the credit, you know, give the credit where it's due. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Edward Norton apparently co-wrote uh, The Incredible Hulk over uh, making a decision over one scene. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I guess what scene it was. Which one? The one where he's turned down Luke Tyler for sex. With his <laughs> heart rate going up. Mm-hmm. Another one that can't have sex. Remember the darkness? <laughs> I've I'm only familiar with the with the video game that came out. One of the premises: the guy turns twenty one and inherits the power of the darkness, but he can't. Yeah, he can't do what his favorite thing, which was getting laid, because if he if he's pregnant like a, a woman, he dies. Hmm. So he can't have any pleasure, huh? Yeah, and that was his favorite favorite thing, other than killing people for money. Wow. <laughs> talk about talk about being a eunuch.
Sorry, I forgot it. I didn't realize I was screen sharing a random black guy. He's not really random. <laughs> Timothy Olson. Well, I think if we were all serious, Cap is just a roid addict. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah, but he's like he only need, he need to take it once and the effect of all the time, like Obelix and Asterisk and Obelix. He felt he, he took the one good one. Never needed to take it again. Yeah, that's true. Uh what's what's that character that's uh a public uh public domain black uh black, black terror. Terror. Yep. Yeah. He has to make his own drugs to uh yeah. to get superpowers. You know, fun fact, I worked uh, he he was one of the characters in Heroes of the North. Oh, no kidding. And I was supposed to be joining one of the stories and before it got canceled. I worked on them. Yeah. What? Uh-huh. You should you should make a campaign of Black Terror. <laughs> I did think about it, but then there was Von uh, that said that he wanted to, and I'm like, right, you know, we don't need to. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's fair. I was thinking about making a Black Terror terror book, but I was like, eh. I really like the idea that he's a junkie, technically. Yeah. Like then he's the one that he's the type that if he doesn't have a fix, he's that he dies. But it also gives him superpowers type of thing. So. Weird. Yeah, uh, I, I went through all the public domain characters, but when you check into it, it they 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 all probably they all have an issue. You know, it's it's never public domain everywhere or something like, uh, example, Conan is public domain in Europe, but not here in the West. Oh, that's bullshit. So that's why in Europe they can pretty much make it. They, they, they made a new series called Conan. It was an adaptation of the original novels, which are public domain, but we couldn't get them here. Wow. Yep. Because uh, we got different laws here because of Marvel and Disney. It takes longer to go into public domain. And if you keep them in the world, you can keep them longer to up to 75 years or something. But then they pushed it up because otherwise they were, Superman would be public domain, right? It's been more than 75 years. Am I right? Yeah. So hence why they're trying to change everything because then it's not, you know has nothing to do with the other one and they don't have to pay their families as much anymore. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, uh Ethan was uh, talking about that about the uh, Superman race swap. Yep. That's why they tried to get rid of this pit curl, redesigning the costume, changing a bit of his origin the way that he was. Remember in the new 52 that was the entire thing behind new 52. I'll be honest, I wasn't paying attention to New 52. I thought it was stupid from the start. That it was... Oh, you're sharing your screen? Boom. Yeah. But I'm not as ahead of you. I was uh, just learning the uh, characters you were drawing. So I could be a little smarter. And I kind of think that even the design is better than the Captain America one. Yeah. I never liked Captain America's helmet. I never liked those wings. Let's give him the classic Kirby American smile. They call the all American smile. That I We 
the only thing I don't like about your original uh, design was the yellow. <laughs> but they replaced it by gold later on. Uh, the uh, the American fighter. Yeah. Okay. Like they gave, like they closed the top of his head, and it was all yellow because he was blonde. Mm -hmm. It was the uh, way that they fixed it. Because if you look at all the covers of the first number, the first one it was hair. Then after that, they just decided to hide the hair. Okay. And to me, leaving the hair out, you no, know, taking that little top piece off makes it, breaks the uh, similarities of uh, Captain America. Because it always just looks like him with a better costume. Yeah, yeah. I find it interesting that uh, that the S.H.I.E.L.D. had a villain. I was looking through some of the panels, mm -hmm. and the S.H.I.E.L.D. had a villain with a character with a uh, swastika shield. That he actually throws and uses as a weapon. Mm hmm. So Stanley kind of stole that. That son of a bitch. Be really surprised. <laughs> well, because I used to think Stanley was such a good guy until uh, Ethan had that story about the fans that he was so sick and tired of. Yeah, and the fact that he, he, he screwed over uh, Jack Kirby. Uh, I have a blank now. But the guy from the Spider Man, it go. Yep. Ah, he's a son of a bitch. Yep. Like I said, you have to give the credit where the credit is due. He was a great salesman, and you know, you know, you build that interaction with the. The fans that you know most comics didn't have before, but that's you know editorial. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of Stanley. I'm a Kirby boy. Do you know what that means? <laughs> I have my imaginations. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too sexual. Not at all. It's just what they used to call the people that started Image and believed that, you know, Kirby was the creator. That's what they call the Kirby boys. Uh, I totally agree. Because one of the things that they wanted to do, the founders of Image, when they first, you know, started, they wanted to do, they wanted to put Stan Lee Present on all their titles. <laughs> and not Stan Lee, uh, Kirby Present, sorry. Oh, shit, that's pretty funny. In answer to Jay, when they know they put Stanley everywhere and big, they wanted to do the same thing, but Jack Kirby presents, and that's when you know his wife called him the the Image Boys, but the Kirby Boys at the same time. That's when the, the expression came. That's genius. But yeah, it's true. Uh, Jack Kirby is an OG historically. You know all this stuff. Everybody. Uh, goes back to it that's pretty much uh the go-to of learning uh learning basic uh comic book business anatomy and storytelling yeah you learn the basic of art then you start learning the minimization of it which is jack kirby but some people compare him to uh like a modern picasso yeah it's kind of like uh the late great uh richard williams mm. I mean, there were other people in the business before him, but he was the guy who uh, wrote wrote the manual, pretty much. I gotta hurry up. I skipped the pencils. I just went rough sketch and let's ink. Let's have fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting used to uh, 
kind of having my own kind of illustration system to it. And if people want, are curious and want to check, uh, you know, the Fighting uh, American, uh, they're pretty much at 25 cents, I think, and all the pins everywhere. No kidding. Uh huh. <clears throat> I just been going on eBay and buying comic book boxes. Yeah, Chris has been going to auctions and doing the same thing or uh, pawn shops. People went to pawn shop and pawned their comic book boxes. So. He goes and picks them up. He's found a few good things in there. I have too. Found a few Fraga books. Even uh, a couple books that were inked by Archie Bear. I got the first issue of Evil Ernie too. I think it's harder to get a book that's not inked by Archie Bear than getting a book that's inked by him. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> no, that's a joke, but he inked a lot of fucking shit. Like hmm. one, me, one of my favorite things that I, you know, was uh, M inking Wallace Potatio. It's like they were magic together, those two. It was like, you know, they should have stuck together because he was like his Wallace Potatio. Uh, not Wallace Potatio, but uh, what's his name? Will, uh, Williams? Scott Williams? Yeah. I heard him say that name a few times. Scott Williams is the inker of... Uh, Jim Lee. Okay. You know, the best way of seeing it is those that freaking first uh, issue with Bishop. Well, that's their mix. The cover, that's them. And it looks so awesome. Yeah. I think you also him to, uh, inked a bit of him on the wet works. I'm not sure. No. But Art's a great freaking inker. Yeah, he is. So how's Tales from the Natverse going? Going pretty well. Just waiting for the last few master pages of Scotsman. When the, the last lettering for uh, the last story there, Nat and Zed. And we're putting everything together already. Yeah, I love that new page you've been putting, put promoting everywhere. Which one? The one where the alien chick's giving that villain a fucking blowjob and it looks like a rim job. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's not for all. It's not for all ages. <laughs> it cracks me up every single time. Uh, wait, <laughs> wait till you see the other the, one of the other scenes. <laughs> Laugh your ass off. Oh uh, damn! I was like, damn, that guy, that guy likes getting nasty with his hose. You don't <laughs> give a fuck. <laughs> he's, a, you know, he's a he's a pirate. <laughs> yep, a pirate that likes to stay clean. Mad props to him. <laughs> Anyways, people are watching. There's still time to back Tales from the Natverse. Yep. Especially if you still want to take advantage of the fight, then right now for $25, you get two prints and six stickers. Because as soon as we're going to print, I'm closing it. And that offer is not going to be available on, you know, again. And I'm not reprinting those 6 a.m. sticker individually again. So, and I only printed 200 of them. Uh, you hear that? Badass 6 a.m. stickers for $25. Yep. A comic. Eight, yeah, an 80-page comic. 80-page comic. Yep. 
Damn. Yeah, nah, it's going to be 80 page. Oh, speaking of campaigns and original art, I just got my uh, uh, Magma, Magma tier. I got original art from uh, Rod Looper. Ooh. And uh, he drew one of my characters. Redrew him. Redrew her. Better than better than I could. You're going to be using it for something? or Probably. I'm kind of, kind of debating. I should ask around if it's appropriate because... But you ask I'm, him. Yeah. So ask him mm -hmm. first. You ask him first, yeah. Might give you permission or ask you, you know, might, might say, well, I'll ask for this if you want to use it for this. Okay. So, yeah, my answer is, yeah, it would, probably, it would be disrespectful if I didn't, if I didn't ask him first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only reason why is it's because it's a, it was a tier I got versus if he yep. did, if he did it and I paid paid him for the commission or something like that. Yeah, there's there's a di there's a difference between like uh, something you just buy. You no, know, it's like a commission sketch. You're not going to be doing a cover or a t-shirt with that. But if you commission somebody for something, that comes in the price, especially if you let them know in advance. Right, right. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That's why usually covers are more expensive than you know interior art. Right. It's because it, it goes on T-shirts, on posters, on this. It's you know. It was one of the big thing reason why uh, Image was funded because the artists were fed up of getting their ripped off because uh, Marvel would uh, reprint comic stuff, make T-shirts and this, and never give them money on it before. Ah, uh, oh, uh, you you want to see the art real quick? Mm-hmm. Let me see. As long as it's presentable. <laughs> oh, there's no, there's no nudity. I didn't have him draw nude stuff. God, I feel bad for people who have to do that sometimes. Can you draw a character based off me having sex with a hot girl? Oh, dude, I always said no. <laughs> The only one that I did that was something similar, but it was not sexual. It was fucking hilarious, so I accepted. You know what it was? What? Uh, a guy paid me to draw his wife uh, punching her boss because she just got fired. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I cannot refuse this. <laughs> So he oh, wanted her drawn as a as power girl bunching the you know her boss's head off. So that happened. <laughs> oh, that's pretty original. I like that <laughs> one. <laughs> How can you uh, say no to that one? You can't. You just can't. It's fun. Do you think? Do you think after this uh, they're gonna see? That we're gonna remind them about the fighting American, and then they're gonna bring him back, and we're gonna find out that he's a Nazi. Probably. That's how it's all gonna go. Oh, no, we it's the American dream. We forgot about them and those guys there. They kind of liked it, so you know what? <laughs> what was it? I was showing a coworker. He's a. Young uh, Mexican guy, the uh, the Supergirl that they made for the uh, Flash movie, mm -hmm. and he was just laughing his ass off. He's like, "She's so ugly." I know she looks like a boy, and the padding doesn't help. Oh yeah, those uh, fake abs. Yeah, fake abs, fake shoulders. Oh, it was horrendous. Oh, here it is. 
Sorry. Uh, if I get to do the fighting American, I'll probably give him a gun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Captain America used guns. Even in the Avengers movies, he used guns. No, maybe I should go see if it's part of a public domain. <laughs> and you, you know, you do a mix of Captain America and Punisher with him. Oh, that would be cool. He had enough of people disrespecting the flag. <laughs> Uh, nobody wants to see that trash stuff. Let's see if I did this right. Oh, nope. So anybody has like uh, any type oh, of like yeah. freedom fighters that they 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 liked in comics that we haven't not discussed because we've touched. Captain America, sh the Shield, freedom, uh, the the Fighting American. There's Superman that we could put in, right? I think it, you know he used to fight for the true justice in the American way. Yep. So Wonder Woman killed the God of Truth. Hmm. That was a joke from the Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> Got uh, I got Rod's art up that he drew for me. I'm gonna take some liberties with that design too. Ooh, it's boobalicious. Yep, yep. It's my girl uh, Mia. Uh, captured her pretty well because uh, the details I gave her is she's like a she's like the embodiment of the California dream, and she's mm -hmm. a femme fatale in blue. And uh, and uh, what was the illustration I sent him was her uh, her undercover look where she's first introduced in uh, in the book. And what's that book going to be about? It's a uh, it's a, uh, a Western neo noir kind of a kind of a uh, kind of like if uh, the Punisher was uh, Rorschach. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's kind of in three parts. Me is in the second part, but um, when I created it, I started with the second part, and uh, I really didn't want to to make a prequel after after the second part. So I decided to start working on the prequel first. I made myself a horrible mess, but uh, but if you like uh, Fight Club. Um, and uh what's well, best description fight club and uh punisher and uh some parts of the watchmen like the Rorschach parts parts you like this even in more like army pants i think you know it's better oh mia like, oh no 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 i'm talking about him yeah i think like I'm a more military so look right with now. you know what i'm so high right now <laughs> uh yesterday I, what was it um my uh my roommate had these uh cases and cases of these chocolates they turned out to be chocolates infused with mushrooms. Oh boy! Oh yeah, I I ate two bars of those, and I was seeing Aztec shit all over my fucking walls. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Maybe you should research it. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. The Aztecs are coming back. Probably. Or mine. Aztec or mine. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Rod, for your illustration of my original character. 
if you watch this anytime in the future. Or John Hervey. It was John Hervey's campaign, too. Yeah, my book's waiting for me at Chris. <laughs> I'm getting the werewolf cover. Oh, I got I got both the covers. And I bought the beanie. There you go. He has a gun now. Well, this is the Captain America we deserve. <laughs> that yeah not the America isn't free and hell Hydra <laughs> yeah now it's like Captain America is like he hates himself because he has the, he, he's Captain America I'm like what <laughs> it's like uh it's like the uh, uh, Winter Soldier show, Falcon and the Winter Soldier show. In the yeah, end, it just it. makes them look well. It makes them look like a fucking. It makes Steve Rogers look like a total asshole when they get to the part with uh, Elijah. Mm -hmm. It's like this whole time in all these fucking movies, you allegedly knew about Elijah, and you didn't do anything, and you had that whole diversity group in the first fucking movie. Yeah. Future public domain character will be every character in the last five years that Marvel and DC has made. Eh, yeah. Probably true. Yeah, yeah. But dude, it's, it, it, if they don't touch them, like, that's why they keep bringing them up all the time. Out of nowhere. Like, you know, remember Plastic Man? Nobody had heard about him for a, a long time. Then they made him like the big bad guy in one story. Then you discovered that it was his wife that killed everybody. What? Oh Jesus! You don't remember that was the uh, the big. Uh, oh, I forgot the name of that story. To be honest, I never really cared for Plastic Man. I never really cared for DC until I became a snob in my mid twenties. No, I was I always loved Superman uh, when I was a teen. Like it's like Marvel is designed to appeal to teens. Period. They all most of the characters are edgy as hell, and. I don't know. They they they're they're more willing to change characters than uh, DC. It's like saying I love Superman, but I'm not a huge fan of the comics. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. There's some arcs I love, like Birthright was fucking awesome. I think uh, Superman was his best in that uh, animated series that Bruce Tim won. Mm hmm. Yep. Or even the old one, the Flesher one, was pretty sweet. Oh, yeah, the one from uh, Paramount. Yep. 1960, 40-something, uh, I think it was. Yeah, that shit was old. Mm-hmm. They yeah, were using was... auto animation, and it came out pretty goddamn sweet. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. And Tesla's a bad guy in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that was a... That was the one where Lois Lane flies into it, flies a plane and meets him, right? Yeah. So what am I missing on the design? Oh. Like, there we go. I really like his design way better. Let's see what you got. Oh, that's awesome. I like that too. You know, if that ever ends up in public domain, I'm doing something with that. Yeah, 
probably do a, you know, Captain, uh, what's the name, Black Terror and the Fighting American. Oh, that would be cool. They just had enough. <laughs> And I think the dynamic between the two could work. Kind of has that Batman Superman type of dynamic between the two. One's more dark and underground. While the other one is more of the, you know, Boy Scout, you could say. Yeah. More optimistic. I remember like a long time ago, like I, I when I was trying to hit the doors to Marvel and stuff like that, one of the things that I was really fucking pissed is I came up with the, uh, dude, I was trying to get them to, you know, get me to do Captain America or something like that. One of the f first drawings I did, I'll show you one day. I still have the, uh, the scan of the original pencils. I think I still have the pencil somewhere. I drew a Captain America with the, the that you saw in Earth X. Earth. That was my submission. Oh no with, shit! With the A carve on it in his forehead, all beat up and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that was my submission to Marvel. No shit. Yeah, I still I still can't believe you actually designed uh, Adam Jensen. <laughs> then you kind of look at him. It's like, wow, that is kind of a sim design character. <laughs> But that's what happens when you're a, a student working, you know. Be careful. <laughs> and another one that was my submission, to the, part of my submission was image at image. Troll. Troll. Yeah. Oh, I think I got, I think I got. The first issue of that book where it said it's co-created by Rob Liefeld. Uh huh. Damn. Yeah, I got the first issue of that. What a scumbag. Yeah, but it it, it was part of all those things when uh, they used to do the talent search. All right, you know that's why there's like almost you can't really have hard feelings. It's annoying, but as soon as they did the talent search, they always say everything you send belongs to them. I get it. I get it. But you know, it's just. It's just a bunch of bullshit with all these interviews of Todd Todd McFarlane, like that one where he's like, yeah, we opened this comic book and we gave uh, new creators the option that it's all theirs. Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, that's a bunch of fucking bullshit. But, you know, that there was some issue with uh, uh, Turner and uh, what's his name? Uh, Benitez when they split up from uh, Top Cow 2 with their rights. Because uh, Turner was part of the creators between Witchblade and Fat it was Fathom, so he had to fight to leave with Fathom. Uh, they kept, uh, you know, Benitez and uh, Chen created uh, Magdalena. I remember that one. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. why uh, David Finch didn't make another Ascension series? Uh huh. Because uh, I think he, uh, yeah, and there was also the fact that, uh, you know, Aphrodite. Aphrodite. Um, that was the character Dave Finch co created with David Wall, and it's part of the it's part it's part of the top count now in Cyberforce. Wow. It was a, it's a green hair girl. Wow. I get I get why a lot of a lot of creators a lot of the old school guys are so burnt out. Mm-hmm. And that's why I mean, you know, even though it pisses me off to see what they're doing with it, I'm kinda I kinda hope they you know they fall and the the rights go back to the right people. I hope so too. That it be to their families. The kids and stuff, or public domain. Just those people work their fucking ass off.
Yeah, they did. I mean, that was probably a lot of their best stuff, and they feel like they can't they can't make another one. Yeah, and you know that's one of the reason why I'm doing this character instead of doing Captain America, because <laughs> that was the statement of that. Well, you you took our Captain America. Now we're gonna do another one. That's better. <laughs> yep. There was that one character I liked in Image, but he's probably a rip off the Patriot. I liked his design. Oh yeah, from uh, Larson. Eric Larson, yeah. yeah. But he was he was inspired by him. Captain America. No, the fighting uh, the the, uh, the fighting American. Oh no, kidding. Yeah, that's why if you look at him before, you look at he, he looked like him a bit. He was super patriot, and then you know he becomes the cyborg. So you have you, you have the one that's like a bit like Shazam, but you had the other one that became super patriot of the the, the robot. Remember? Uh, no, I only I only got a couple comics. I haven't read them yet. And... Because in Savage in Savage Dragon, you had a, a cyborg type of a uh, patriot character. He used to be a type of uh, fighting American. He was the previous uh, Mar uh, Captain. You know, what the name his name is. I only watched a few of the uh, Savage Dragon cartoons. And you know, technically, he got left. He left to die, and he survived, turned into a cyborg. Oh, that is, that's kind of cool. That was also the same story behind Die Hard. <laughs> not the movie, but the character in uh, Tom, uh, Rob Liefeld and uh, Youngblood. Okay, okay. You know, they did so many stuff like that, dude, of like parodying or trying to do another type of Captain America stuff like that. That I, you know, you can't blame that some people were, they were just ripping off. No, they, yeah, they did a few of those, but they also had great series. Yeah. I'm one of the, I'm one of the rare ones that actually enjoyed Wildcats for a while. I did too. It was like a different outside option. Mm-hmm. Like Cyberforce in the start, okay, it picked up and became something interesting after, with all the alien tech and stuff that took a different twist, which was interesting, but it also lost his way. You know what looked really cool? They have them on the internet. Is they have the uh, uh, the Young Bloods introduction? Oh yeah, the series they were about to make and uh, the Nexus. Did you see the? Uh, did you ever watch the Wildcat series and the the uh, the Savage Dragon? The uh, yeah, movie? yeah, I I watched those some of those and the Wildcats one. I remember the one where what's his name, the guy who can uh, change his side, where he uh, meets his dad for the first time since he's uh, changed. You know which character I'm talking about—the one with the horns on his back. Uh, mall, yeah. yeah, yeah. The one that the bigger he gets, the dumber he gets. Oh, because <laughs> the brain doesn't follow. Yeah, and later on they applied it that it works the other way around too. So the more he reduces himself, like the mass, right? So becomes scrawny shit. The, the smarter he gets. That's a pretty cool concept. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a kind of like that a TV show, uh, The Invisible Man. Not in a TV show, no. Yeah, there was a movie. Oh, uh, this is this is kind of a superhero one where the guy guy was a cat burglar, and he was he was uh, uh, enlisted by the government to uh, uh, test his invisibility formula. So and, technically, uh, it's it's the Invisible Man from the uh, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. his backstory. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He's he's the he's told he stole the recipe from the original guy. <laughs> he he was a spy, and then you know, <laughs> that was technically the story. Yeah. Does he have to? Does he have to uh, take a drug that makes him less crazy? Uh, not as far as I know, but I haven't read the comics. So. Yeah, in the TV show, that's what this guy had. He had to uh, take this formula, or else his uh, he would go insane, and he'd start killing people and shit like that.
Oh, what do you guys think about my fighting America? Just past the hour. Oh, let's see what you're doing. I'm doing the shield. I'm trying to do a little homage piece. He is a cool character, though. The design. Oh, yeah. I like the... Uh, I like... I like the flag suit going down. It used to be published at Impact Comics. Now, now it belongs to Archie. And there's, <clears throat> you know, what's the funniest thing? <clears throat> if anybody pay attention here to Rob Liefeld, he announced that he's he's doing a number one. He's relaunching uh, the Shield at Archie Comics. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> yeah, Rob Liefeld's relaunching the Shield. <laughs> I believe Phelps just doing going fuck you to everybody, ain't he? Yeah, he's trying to you know reestablish himself. You could say. I mean, it's a good time. He's pretty much. The I'm, most st I'm still I'm still waiting on my fucking brigade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good luck in that coming out. But uh, supposedly, there's uh, people were showing the fact that they were getting it. I got an email not too long, uh, a few weeks ago. I'd say a month, oh. month, a month and a half ago, saying that uh, if you haven't received it or an email about it, send them a message. They're fulfilling. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm supposed to have two copies coming. We'll see. You know, you. you he, 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 now he's doing like a snake eye series. I don't know if it's any good. But I do have to admit that the, when I saw that little advertisement for the shield, I went like, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> I haven't seen it myself. Let me see if I can find the, the first image they shared. Because I think you could find it on Amazon. Hold on. There you go. It's right there on on, a, on Amazon. Boom. Let me share my screen. Yeah. You can buy it on comics. Uh, you know, digital right now. There you go. Oh shit! So. Trying to say the trying to do the look inside, but it's not letting me for some reason. Liefeld drew this. Liefeld, author, artist. Yeah, and there's another artist in it. So I'm trying to. There you go. Yeah. So story and art by Rob Liefeld. Yeah. So it's all it's all the impact characters. You have a female fly. I don't remember all of them, but yeah. So that's uh that's the end of the sample. <laughs> I like this though. That's probably the old one that turned bad. <laughs> I don't know. And that's a new one. I'm not sure. Yeah. Looks like they're trying to get J.K. Simmons to play as him. <laughs> that would kind of be awesome. <laughs> he was in that, uh, he was in that, uh, uh, the time travel movie on Amazon. Hmm? Uh, the Chris Pratt movie. Mm -hmm. Plays as, uh, Chris Pratt's, uh, estranged father. Oh, so that 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 uh, fight for tomorrow thing or tomorrow roar? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I, I don't know about it. Did you see it? Yeah. How is it? It's okay. Hmm. I mean, it's pretty much pretty much a kind of a homage to a homage to video games. Did you ever watch? A, did you end up watching Boss Level? 
Yes. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I, 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 I like the yes. <laughs> it was very like expressive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I fucking loved it too. <laughs> Uh, Mel Gibson is a great villain. <laughs> I know, right? Even in Fat Man, he was great. I haven't seen Fat Man yet. I'm waiting for that to uh, come on. Uh, come on, you know, Hulu or something. Uh, it's on Amazon or Netflix, I think. Really? Yeah, but that's where it came out. Yeah. No shit. It was there. Yeah. Check. I'm not sure which one, but I think it's. Uh, I think it's Amazon. I'm not sure. I'll check again. I've been watching the shit out of Fight Club lately. Well, you're a Lobo fan, right? Yeah. You've read pa Paramilitary Christmas? No. The one where the Easter Bunny hires Lobo to kill Santa Claus? Because Santa Claus turned all like, uh, yeah, dark and commercial and shit. <laughs> so when you watch Fat Man, it's like watching the origin of that fucking Santa. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Because the story is there's a rich kid that gets coal and he's not happy, so he hires a hitman to kill Santa. Yeah, I saw the trailer. That shit was kind of hilarious. <laughs> and the guy they picked to play the killer is pretty big. <laughs> he's hilarious. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the one guy who used to be in the shield. Mm hmm. He goes, I watched it drunk. <laughs> so I need to watch it again. No clue how it ended. <laughs> so no spoilers. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hit the like button. What's up, DJD? Thanks for joining in. Wishing us happy Fourth of July and happy Canada Day. Thank you because they tried to they tried to delete it here. Even Trudeau went on freaking live on YouTube saying that we should be ashamed and not celebrate it. Yeah, Trudeau is such a cock. Yeah. Can't wait for him. To, like, the only reason I ever considered going into politics was because he's there. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. Seriously, dude, it's kind of like, come on, somebody. You know, you need somebody that's going to be calling his bullshit in front of everybody and don't give a fuck. Yep. I mean, it's like uh, some of the stupid mayors in the city right now. There's a. I told you about the Lightfoot one, right? Right? Yeah. And, uh, what? Oh, Mayor de Blasio, New York. It's like, uh, they got a, they got a, uh, power outage warning and they're like, nobody use your air conditionings right now. Heat wave to conserve power. Well, and then, uh, the president, the president was like, this holiday, you can save 16 cents on your barbecue. Yeah, I saw, like, everybody's trying to advertise not to celebrate the 4th of July. I know, it's fucking stupid. Being oh, ashamed of your flag or something, that's, like, dude. And to add insult to injury, that, that girl, that running, American girl running, <laughs> she's been disqualified for smoking weed? Yep. <laughs> These are that one. So me and my favorite stripper will adopt you if you want to get America card. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that. Yeah, the kids got to come too, right? Mm -hmm. I got my fam and I'm not leaving them behind. Shit, you got to get the whole package. You got to <laughs> marry the whole family, dude. <laughs> I keep on telling them too. It's about time, you know. We take all the candidates best, even Peter North. Mm. Uh, most of the most of the the great Canadians are on your side. <laughs> yeah, they are. Even the even the historic most historically significant Canadians, mm -hmm. like uh, Michael J. Fox. Yep. John Candy. Dan Aykroyd. Yep. Uh, Eugene Levy. Eugene Levy. Gene, James Cameron. Yes. Uh, Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. Todd McFarlane. Mm-hmm. John Byrne. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Pamela Anderson. Also. There's uh, many. The list is fucking long. Like the other day, like I was supposed to go on Ryan's channel and he goes, prepare a list of, you know, I'm like, dude, there's not much list of stuff that I, you know, like comic books here or stuff like that. Cause most of our people, eh, they go on your side. <laughs> yeah. So I had an entire fucking list of all the great movie makers, actors, comedians, stand up comic, comic book artists. You know, Nick Bradshaw is one of them. Nick the guy Bradshaw. that draws like Arthur Adams now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, David Finch, right? David Finch, another Montreal or two. Comes from the same place as me. Okay. You have that Delkian, Canadian, Alberta, I think. Cheech and Chong. Uh, there's one of them. Chong. No, they both did. I mean, Cheech came from Mexico, but he immigrated to Canada. He was a carpet oh. salesman. I didn't know he, that. Uh, yeah, he met uh, he met Chong because Chong owned a strip club. And it, it wasn't really busy, so they were bored, and uh, they did uh, stand-up okay. acts. Here's another one. Coo -coo 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 -coo. Fucking Rick Moranis, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yeah, Buddy, Rick I the fucking kids. Space balls. <laughs> uh, strange brew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fuck. No, I, I keep saying this. Like, people forget that. We used to just be, like, the favorite cousins. Like, you know what I mean? Like... I used to, dude, I could just go visit you, like, and, and go buy a house next to you with no no bother, you know, send you a freaking thing, just put an extra freaking post stamp on it. That's what, that's how we grew up. And now yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, we're all separated, which are like, how old hate each other, and a oh, fuck. That's like, really? It's you divided. Really and it's like, separate, separate the two, the two solid fucking backbone <laughs> of fucking the West, and uh, let's get them at each other and split them up. Can't Maybe. believe they succeeded, dude. Yeah, they did in a big way, and it's kind of funny. It's just a couple of years ago, you know, yeah. Canada used to be raunchier than us with humor. I mean, if anybody ever seen that show, Todd versus the Book of Evil? <laughs> yeah, dude, we we dude, we're, we're, we were more based in our comedy than any than, than it's, it's fucking sick. It's nuts, and now it's like words hurt. Where did that come from? I know, and th th those are freaking like babies are raised on fucking Family Guy and all that, and now they get all this fucking like South Park and shit, and they get all their fifis hurt. It's like that's when you know that it's not about fifis; it's about power and getting special treatment. They don't want to get, they don't want nothing. They just want to be superstar, but yep. they don't want to, don't want to put in the fucking work. Mm -hmm. And they want to hold everybody else down. That's why they make up these rules. It's like a, it's like a dictatorship of. Uh, what you can't do, but I can do. Yeah, the A thing. Yeah, it's not it's not a thing here in Canada. About Montreal, Quebec. It's really a Canadian thing out of Quebec. The A. Like, dude, I used to think that it was just a joke or, you know, like uh, brain damage hockey players. I don't want to go, I'm giving my eight my, my 100%. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's I thought I thought that's that was a joke because of that, right? Until I actually went to you know a place and you hear the a boot, eh? You're like, what? <laughs> that's 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 not just a fucking like caricature. Oh boy, okay. Like you know, I I, I got in an argument one day with Ty Templeton, a guy that works at DC Comics, because he was making fun of the fact that I say Z instead of Z. Because <laughs> I should, you know, where. It, 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 it's that I'm like, dude, do you say zebra or you say zebra? <laughs> yeah, but Z, that's the American. I'm like, no, that's proper talk. It just <laughs> makes fucking sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you don't see, you know, you don't, you don't say uh, invaders Zam, Zam. You say invader Zim. Yep. God damn it. It's funny uh, because uh, I grew up in Michigan. My yeah. my family from Detroit, they they use a. I'm like, you guys aren't Canadian. Why the fuck are you using it? Oh, it's just a thing we do here, eh? Oh, I mean, I really thought that you know it was just a freaking caricature thing, like a joke thing, you know, like making fun of the hockey aspect of us, you know. When I was watching Rick Moranis in that show, The Strange Brew, but that's not the name of the show, it was Up North or something. 
because that was that movie was based on a show that they were they, they had here in case you didn't know i didn't know so there's an actual show that you could find of it <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, so, uh i forgot the first name something and doug do you remember both their boat names it's, i don't remember greg and doug or something i don't remember hold on Let me research right now i'm smoking too so It's Bob and Doug McKenzie up north, something like that. Yeah, that was the show. McKenzie Brothers? Uh, McKenzie. It's Bob and Doug. Oh, they weren't brothers? They just had yeah, they're brothers. Up. No, no, they're brothers. Oh. They're, it's Bob and Doug McKenzie, our oh. two brothers who helped, you know, Bob regain the control. You know, that's the movie pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when Rick Moranis in New York got his uh, ass beat and got mugged? That was fucked up shit. <laughs> you don't hear about this guy in years, and the biggest thing that happens to him on the news is he gets his ass kicked for no apparent reason. Yeah, it's you know, so it's just was a Bub and Doug McKenzie, the Great White North show. That's what it was, man. And that's where the strange brew came from. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember uh, the uh, McFarlane line of action figures. Yeah, DJD says Ottawa. You said uh, most of all Canada. That's what I keep saying. Like I've noticed, like by exploring a little bit that. Even the way they talk, it's more inspired towards the British than the American type of uh, English. Well, if you pay if you if you pay attention to how we speak French in Quebec, it sounds more like American English than actually old French. <laughs> weren't the uh, weren't the first uh, colonies in Canada Scottish? Yep. So that would kind of make sense. Yep. They were getting rid of them from the UK, sending them here. They did the same thing with Ar with Irish later. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, yeah. That, that's why, you know, if you look at anything like uh, like the parades or stuff like that for Canada Day and stuff like that, there's, uh, there's no windpipes, people in kilts. That's the reason, because that's strongly Scottish. And, yeah. you know, who discovered us first? The fucking Vikings. Oh yeah, same thing with the same thing with the United States. And keep in mind, we also we also one of the rare ones that you know when the Nazis came knocking on our back door, we sent them fucking packing, and not army. It was lumberjacks. <laughs> <laughs> the lumberjacks sent them fucking packing. It was not even the Mounties. <laughs> <laughs> <Can't>. <laughs> right. Fuck you, want back the fuck away. <laughs> Can't say the same for the Mexicans. They were about to join the Nazis. Yeah, and the fucking French. Oh yeah. Why do you think we don't like being compared to the freaking French here? <laughs> then why do then then why do the French Canadians go? I'm French Canadian. Because they speak French. Oh. Not that has nothing to do with French French. It's like uh, for a, for a long time. Uh, they used to call us frogs here because it used to be the insult for French people because they eat frog legs. And during the big freaking disputes and stuff like that between French and English, they used to call us frogs to piss us off because they know we hate, we don't, we don't, we don't like to be compared to the French. Ah, okay. And we called them the square heads. <laughs> That's why those yep. South Park characters to pick. Exactly. <laughs> 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 that makes so much fucking sense now. They would call us the frogs and we call them the squares. <laughs> oh shit, that's hilarious. That's why I'm like, oh, color racism. I'm like, guy, just people hating each other just because of language here. Yeah. I was like, you know, 
Can you just stop? There's people that just don't like other people. That shit fucking happens. Educate them instead of just, you know, building more fucking hate and division, you cunts. It's like, how can you understand something you can't even ask a question about it? I mean, that's the main thing that I, you know, do not question. Do not do this. There's a, otherwise, it's hatred. No, it's not. It's trying to understand. Yep. understand shit if you can't ask any fucking question or you know even criticize something i can't I, at the basic of anything a freaking conversation is that is a debate <laughs> mm -hmm. you express an idea somebody goes well that's not how i see it you go oh well please uh, you know explain mm -hmm. or at least valid proof to to support your statement Mm-hmm. God, I got into an argument with anti-CG people. I think I dipped myself too far in the Pandora's box for myself. You, know how, you see how people are bickering about uh, uh, the Cyber Frog action figures? No, there's people bickering about it? Yeah, they were... See, the first thing that started was, uh, was the joints. They're like, oh, this is Todd McFarlane quality? So... I show an Angela action figure and show the joints. I'm like, oh, that's from 1995. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's a female figure with the joint, same joints that the Heather Swine figure. Yeah. And I can't really find too many recent McFarlane figures with uh, half naked females. I mean, I mean, they could find it. And then, and then they go to uh, the price of uh, the figures and they're like, well, you have to pay pay an extra forty dollars after you bought the. Uh, they didn't say this. They're like, uh, there's you got to pay one ninety five with shipping, and then an additional forty dollars to get that figure. I'm like the figure is only forty dollars. What are you guys talking about? And they're like, you're stupid. And then I'm realizing they're arguing that they're bitching about the 195 tier where you're getting four action figures and then you can add on this special option special uh variant where heather swine has a has a white shirt for 40 dollars i'm like it's still <laughs> it's still you're getting five action figures yeah but there will always be people complaining about stuff it's it it could be like People that want them aren't just people that just like to freaking hate and complain about stuff. But the I, sad, the sad I, I, I saw the one where people were like, action figures weren't made like that in the 90s. Like, motherfucker, <laughs> you, you weren't buying in the 90s. Yep. But yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think you, you know, forty dollars for a fucking figure like that, it's that much. Yeah, Actually, they're limited, and they're uh, they're made by an actual independent guy who's making them pretty much by himself, or i.e. a smaller smaller group. It's not like uh, it's not like you can go to he can go to China and get a whole factory. Uh, you could maybe not China, but you know you you could get Taiwan for the budget he has right now. For mass production, I don't know what budget he has. Well, I'm guessing, but I, I I think his point is he's trying to do it himself so he could start his own you know production, and then if he grows enough, he's probably going to try and uh, you know reach a bigger money figure. Exactly. And it's the same plan as Tom McFarlane. I don't understand why people are complaining. That's exactly what you said. It's just something to bicker about. Yeah. But anyways, I put myself in a Pandora's box, and now I got all these people calling me a stupid moron and stuff like that because they can't uh, they can't argue right. Aren't you a fucking like uh, toy collector? <laughs> like yeah, you have like figurines and stuff like that. Is like. like I think you kind of know what you fuck you're talking about. I don't have any. I don't really have any uh, figurines, or I got uh, bison dolls for uh, references. Mm -hmm. 
you know, more for my figure drawing and getting uh, figures a little better. They're not really of any characters, but uh, my own. But didn't you say that you had the Angela thing? Or you just pulled a reference? Just me, I, I have pulled, Angela. I pulled a reference photo, but the Angela figure you can get easily on eBay for $15 in, in the package. TSR did nothing wrong. <laughs> I was going to start coloring this. I think we're going to close the stream and I'm going to go eat something. Go for it. I don't want to keep you. Appreciate you having me on the show. Oh, thanks for dropping by. That's yeah. my illustration of the shield so far. And boom. Smashing a robot. Looks kind of familiar. Yeah, I try to I try to do a homage or a, a remix of an old cover. I don't think I did it good. <laughs> and music, I was starting I was starting to do the the flats for the colors. Or is my fighting American? Kind of like more of the military look. I do too. And if I would like kind of like finish it off with my like, I'd probably give him a jacket. <laughs> they get a little you know jet bomber jacket on it. That would be cool. Yeah, and like, you know, knives this. More like, you know, make him more of a military guy, you know. That's gonna, about to go, you know, at war in the freaking jungle or something. I like the simplicity better. I like the uh, gun holster in the pouch. Here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of gives it that classic pop look. Yeah, very, very kind of pulpy. Mm-hmm. I like the giant boots too. <laughs> so yeah, thank you everybody for joining. Thanks, uh, El Gargo, for joining me too. And thank you, you. everybody in the chat. So this was me going happy Fourth of July and stay patriotic. Back pills from the Nevers. Thank you. We're going to print soon, and you definitely don't want to miss it. And here's the famous last words of the show. Have a good night. I see that story first. I feel that story first. I know those people first. When I put them down, they've already lived. And I put them down as I'd like them to live on those pages. My stories are very sincere.